It's Monday, July 14th, 2014. I'm Ariel Nunez, and from our CBS studios in New York City, welcome to the 404. Hey, what's up, everyone? Thanks for tuning in to the 404 Show. I'm Jeff Bacalar. And I'm Justin Yu. So uh, it's been a, quite a couple days here at the lab, mm-hmm. the 404 Mystery Lab, where we've got a team of scientists and gumshoes working around the clock trying to figure out the great grapefruit caper. Yeah. No, but seriously, if you listened on Friday, Justin told us a very interesting story about uh, a robbery that occurred across the hall from him. And... You know, the, the police are stumped. No mm-hmm. one knew exactly how it happened. So if you didn't, so you haven't heard the story, go back to Friday's show and listen to the circumstances of what transpired. And over the weekend, we got a, we got a smattering of emails and tweets, people mm-hmm. uh, guessing, hypothesizing what happened. Using all the details in the story, including the grapefruit, to come up with a the hypothesis. Grapefruit is a key character witness. Yeah. So a lot of people... You know, and again, the, this kind of gives away the thing. So if you didn't hear the story, go back and listen to Friday's show. But a lot of people are writing in and they think it was the girl. They think she somehow mm. was involved in it. <laughs> human error is human, always where the story goes Human wrong. error. And so the, the responses were split between that mm-hmm. answer where she was in on it. She is trying to get the insurance money. Right. Although... I mean, come on. You're doing this to get, like, two grand? Somebody wrote in a pretty good theory on um, on maybe she made a copy of a key for an ex or something, and he copied it before giving the original back when they broke up. So here's, And he was feeling vindictive, and that's why he came back to the scene of the crime. And I guess maybe... And stole the grapefruit vindictively. Because the grapefruit... <laughs> because she loves, she loves grapefruit. <laughs> right. And it symbolized their bittersweet relationship. Right, right, right. He knows that. Achille writes in and says, From the items that were taken, it sounds like a pissed off former significant other yeah. that came back to collect items that he or she had yet to return. Right, like they his knew, Kindle charger. Right, which was like, Why you know, would they steal a Kindle couldn't charger? live without that. They knew her schedule, had a key, and only took those items specific to someone who knew her very well. Mm -hmm. They also knew she loved grapefruit, and therefore (laughs) is the one item they took just to piss her off. But they also knew details about exactly which apartment she was in, because nobody else got tampered with. And that's why they had the balls to do it, you know, in the evening. But then also, uh, it was clearly somebody who, you know, knew her running schedule too and knew that she was would run every day after work and that she would be gone for four hours that's a long time well i'm gonna say no one ever runs for four hours what was she doing well i just think like the run the real run schedule is hidden in those four hours probably so that's when me, okay so manuel writes in and he says so how about she goes out it's easy for a person to grab her keys at work or at a bar, make an impression of the key, and go make a new key from the impression. I don't See, know about don't, that, that. That's a lot of work just to steal a laptop. If you were gonna, if you're gonna do that much work, you gotta take everything. You and know what, what I mean? was on that laptop? Maybe there was some vital information on that laptop. Mm-hmm. Got to get our hands on that laptop. That's what makes me think it's an ex-boyfriend. Is that maybe there were pictures or something of his on the laptop? Who knows? Have you heard about lock bumping? This, okay, so there's the theory of the ex-boyfriend, but this there's a other wh- theory yeah. about how potential people broke in, it doesn't really explain why they chose her apartment, but it does explain why the deadbolt was untampered with. So John Hester, he, he, uh, he, he wrote in, you know, this happens a lot, and, and a few years back, most consumer-grade deadbolts were vulnerable to a technique known as lock bumping. And I hadn't heard of this before, had you? I had heard of it. This is like some Penn & Teller stuff. But she, he's like, the bumping technique involves basically <laughs> tapping the lock with a hammer while you have the key inside. But you make a dummy key with all the teeth filed down, and you tap that while it's in there, and you turn at the same time. Apparently, that'll open up pretty much anything. Here's what it looks like when someone bumps a, a, a lock. I don't know, man. I, I don't think... I mean, that's a deadbolt. But 
I don't think those old school deadbolts are vulnerable to that. You know mm -hmm. what I'm talking about? Like the old school sort of golden ones. I have no idea. Right? You know. you, what are they? I mean, I guess those are a deadbolt too, but come on. I mean, like these look like really cheap ass locks. Maybe. I, I mean, I have no idea what quality of lock we have in our lock apartment. Lock bumping. Get out of here. I don't know. I don't know. Um, Creepy though. Someone else said maybe like you can make a wax key. Have you ever heard of that? No. What? Oh, we got all these like B and E experts. Yeah, that's kind of terrifying how people come out like that. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. The mystery still continues. You have no updates for us, right? No, no updates at all. Actually, I saw her over the weekend. She said cops had no leads or anything. Well, they obviously I, don't care. Yeah, I was gonna say they totally. Like, who would care? Are not investigating this. Yeah, this at is all. this is not. <laughs> Uh, pivotal to national security right now. It's an insurance scam, man. See, that's, you know, you're not the Could first person to too. say that. Mm -hmm. I I don't know, man. That's not a lot of money to do. Like, you, if you want to do an insurance scam, you do, like, your wedding ring or something, right? So, yeah, but you, that's when they start investigating, though. Right. Like, if you say, like, oh, just my laptop, that's only valuable. Yeah, maybe yeah. your laptop maybe was getting kind of old, and she's like, you yeah. know what, let me just get a new laptop. I'll pay the $500 deductible, yeah, and I'll check, get, like, check a $1,500. History. Wait a minute, Justin. How do you know the specific amount of her deductible? Oh. <laughs> I did, well, you're in it together. The show is over. <laughs> Imagine he's just like, flip, you know, flip the table and like, got out of here. Yeah. Yeah. I am the girl. It's like some old guy. Yeah. Yeah. Or it was her. It was her. Yeah, yeah. I am her. That I don't know, man. What I do know is this mystery is getting old. I want a new one now. I, I moved beyond. I want something else. You don't I even care? I mean, this girl still yeah. had her laptop I don't care. stolen. I just simply <laughs> don't care. Back. She's fine. She's not hurt. That's all that matters. Let's get a new mystery. Yeah. I want to do a new mystery every week. Wouldn't that be rad? If you have a great mystery, and don't do like a cliched one, because we could just search on the internet for the answer. Okay. We need a new, fresh mystery from a, from a listener. Mm -hmm. so, or maybe us. I'll try and think <laughs> I don't think we one. should move on to new mysteries nah, before the old mysteries have I'm been solved. I'm bored with the yeah. other these one. These are all beyond solved, man. Yeah, these <laughs> are all just open We're not real detectives. Mysteries. <laughs> but like, yeah, this is a cold case. Okay. <laughs> you know, it went cold. I mean, what's the statute of limitations? Like 72 hours on a freaking petty larceny. Yeah. Right? I need a new, fresh, dangerous, and daring <laughs> mystery to excite my senses. Yeah, all right. I so, want to know what, what's going on with people. I'm all you don't ears, have any man. weird mysteries? Nothing weird out of place? Yeah, there's like, I don't know. I'm trying to think of something wacky, yeah. you know? Nothing, it's always like, oh, it was just X, Y, Z, mm -hmm. you know? There's like maybe 30 seconds of sheer mystery, and yeah. then you're like, oh, Simple explanation. I'll tell you, it's really, it's a really weird feeling to know that there are maybe people across the street from your apartment that are watching you and sort of taking note of your habits every day. If that's really what was happening here, it I really doesn't make that. me feel good about the neighborhood. Who the hell is stay? Who the hell is doing reconnaissance steak at work for a freaking laptop? You know, are you at? We watch too many goddamn TV shows. I started like like really closing the door very quietly so that none of my neighbors could hear me leave, and like pretending to talk to someone who's in the apartment when I'm leaving. Like, okay, I'll be right back. Don't don't go anywhere. This whole I'll be back in 15 minutes. I'm not gonna leave for very long. So Every just time. stay right there and keep keep polishing that gun. Yeah, keep. Closing Cleaning the guns, I'll be back. <laughs> it's this is driving you crazy. Yeah, that's basically what's happening. And then I'll like go out of my apartment, leave, come back in, go back out again. It's turned you into a madman. <laughs> All right, I'm into it. Yeah, I hope we get a new good mystery. I could use a new one. Yeah, I'm these are exciting. <laughs> these are exciting. In the meantime, though, we got we got some pretty good stories today, though, to talk about. Great. Um, speaking of uh, stolen data, this is kind of terrifying. So, you know, these days it's pretty old to sell your, uh, it's pretty uh, standard to sell your old phone when you buy a new one, right? Everyone yeah, does sure. That. They trade it in with Gazelle or Radio Shack or something to get a new phone. Uh, and then also I think the only standard thing people normally do when they give an old phone away is to do your factory reset wipe, right? To basically wipe the device clean of all your old stuff. Yeah, I mean, that's like regarded as like, you know, the complete... You got to do that. Well, yeah, but like people feel, I mean, when I think of a factory reset, I think of like complete zeroing, yeah. right, zero out. Yeah, right? it's like that you're whole... getting a whole brand new device. Yeah. Um, but over the weekend, we got some pretty terrifying news from a security firm in the Czech Republic. They're called Avast. And they tell, told us that they were able to take phones that had been reset, factory reset. And they were able to recover pictures, text messages, and videos 
um, using really simple software that pretty much anyone can download online right what now. What the hell? Yeah. So here's what they did. They bought 20 random phones on eBay. Now, these were older phones, right? They didn't say which ones they were, but they were both Android and uh, iOS-based phones, right? Um, a little bit older, but they took those 20 phones and using those that software, they were able to extract 40,000 photos of women what? in various stages of undress. Why was it just women and why were they naked? It's not just women. It was just 40,000 photos of women. Oh my God. They also found 250 selfies of dudes. Okay, go on. With pants asunder. Oh, nice. I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fully exposing themselves. All right, so... so it didn't matter what kind of phone. No, it didn't matter what kind of phone it was. Um, but they were able to do that. 250 versus 40,000. There's a lot more women out there sending nudes than men. I don't, I and that's wanna, only over 20 phones. That's an uns- What's 40,000? Dude, that's insane. This is an unscientific survey. Though. Yeah. That's weird. So I guess the real thing is like, man, factory reset, not what you think it is. Yeah. You need a hard reset. And the other is thing is, is, if you take a random smattering of phones on eBay, chances are each one will have over a thousand photos of naked women on it. Well, that's, that's really disturbing. Or it's just plain old good luck. I don't yeah. understand why. Um, like, how, so how does the software work? Like, how um, does it, so the software, like, I, I guess it's basically just security uh, software. It's meant to look for indexed phones. But the problem with uh, old devices is that. Um, I guess those old ones don't index them. They just kind of wipe it really quick. Mm-hmm. And then you could still have the the backup photos. Right, because I remember the phone. I remember like the big thing when you would get rid of a hard drive was to zero out all of the drives, meaning right. like you would write zeros instead of just... Yeah, instead of just deleting it, right. you got to overwrite it. Because the, exactly. the way I understand it is like when you dump something into the trash or the recycle bin or whatever the hell it is, yeah. it's just telling the computer like forget about it. It's not actually eliminating those ones and zeros zeros yeah. from the hard drive it's yeah. just sort of saying hey don't worry about that anymore right so what you want to do and this is like i feel like it's like 2002 computer <laughs> you know philosophy but you want to write over that you right. want to make sure that never comes back that's not necessarily going to be the case when you hit the the factory reset i feel like a yeah. factory reset is different than a hard reset where factory reset is going to bring the phone back to the condition it was when you first opened it up, yeah. meaning it might not write zeros to. And I wouldn't. I don't know how to manually overwrite a phone. You could do that on a so hard. So what drive. you do is you take a phone and you put it on a table, and then you grab a sledgehammer. Yeah. And you just bash that thing. Yeah, seriously. And that's the biggest, that's the best protection, it sounds like. You know what's funny is Avast actually gave the same advice. They're saying... Smash it up. Yeah, if you if you really don't want anyone to have access to your stuff, you just got to destroy it. In a glorious sort of office space-esque yeah. style execution. Take all your crap off it, put it on another hard drive, and then destroy that phone. That makes sense, man. I mean, I don't know. I don't really, I don't sell my phone back. Yeah. Do you? Mm, I've sold one or two. Yeah. You gotta smash it up, baby. I don't have too much incriminating stuff. I only have 500 oh, I'm, photos. Oh, of I'm sure. Not I'm sure your phone is as clean as a preacher's <laughs> yeah. sheet. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. Didn't they just announce over the weekend that like 2% of the Roman Catholic Church? Did you read about that? The What's Pope it? announced that over the weekend 2% of the Roman Catholic Church are pedophiles. It's pretty bad. Yeah. 2% is a lot. 2% is a ton. <laughs> I think it's like over 2,000. Oh, because of that cliche I said? Yeah. The preacher yeah. sheets? Things? Right. Yeah. That's gross, man. I know. Sorry to drop that Why'd little you, tidbit. Why you <laughs> Speaking of preacher I just, sheets, Jeff, <laughs> 2% of them I are pedophiles. I just read that before we started this show. And I was like freaking out about it. I just needed to get that off my chest. Yeah. So thanks for letting me it do that. It definitely falls into the not my problem category. <laughs> <laughs> so all I'm trying to say. Yeah. In the meantime, though, do destroy those phones. That's yeah. priority number Smash one. Smash it and up, And we'll man. take care of the church stuff. <laughs> I'm not taking care of any of that. That is <laughs> clearly not my problem, but smash it up, baby. Smash it up. Yeah. I All like right. Um, so what do you want to talk about, Lex? Let's talk about this posture story because uh, it's something that I think we're all affected by. Okay. We all have terrible posture. Uh, right? Speak for yourself, man. Come on. What I've seen you? you look like Mr. Burns. No. no. Or a T-Rex. You no. got terrible First posture. First of all, T-Rexes were horizontal for the most part. What do they call? I don't even know. I forget what it's called. Scoliosis. Scoliosis. Is yeah. That, but I don't know. If, I think that's a squiggly spine. I don't think that's hunched over. Is that not the same thing? Yeah, it's not the same thing. Well, I remember in high school, we all had to do that scoliosis exam where right. you kind of mm-hmm. sit down with your legs against the ground. 
and then you like try to touch your toes with your fingertips and no one could do it everyone had some degree of scoliosis yeah i mean and then like they they wanted kids to stop wearing heavy backpacks yeah yeah you know your back is super important i can't stress that enough to young people yeah like just don't treat your back like crap this guy's been having back problems lately haven't you yeah but it's just because i'm old i don't think that's <laughs> it's to do with it. yeah. my lower back will just hurt because i stepped wrong you know <laughs> yeah. I stepped wrong. <laughs> yeah like i've been riding my bike a lot lately and it just kills me sometimes too yeah. i sneeze real hard and my back hurts. <laughs> yeah. it hurts but i did do that scoliosis test and i remember them telling me uh to stop holding my backpack on just one side yes mm. yeah. you gotta you gotta that balance the out. weight mm -hmm. and you know what it was too we went to school in the 90s so everyone had their backpacks really low so i feel like you're not supposed to be oh, doing yeah. that like lifting with the lower back you know what i mean like everyone yeah, i don't know had if their that's what that is though butts. like i don't know if that means your lower back yeah i'm not sure that can't know. be good for your back though that's not how backpacks, backpacks meant to be can't worn. be good for your back yeah. you see like these movers man you ever see what the i mean yeah, you're getting ready for belts and stuff. not only that but they like they just put a leather strap around like 90 pounds of boxes yeah and just pop it right on their back yeah and they, I don't know. And then walk down four flights. And they walk backwards. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> I, I don't get it. I don't get it, man. Your yeah. back, I man, you gotta, you gotta really take care of your back. It sounds like it's, just, this is good advice. There's like kids on my hockey team are yeah. all jacked up. Yeah. You gotta keep that backyotomy. Yeah. You don't want a backyotomy. No, those things that's hurt. Bad, really that's bad. bad for business. Um, yeah. And I feel like as, you know, we were probably the first generation to start having really bad backs because we were the first internet generation maybe. and computer game generation. You mean like the perch, people who are yeah, the perch? Yeah, that yeah. thing. And then our eyes were also bad because we had been watching too much TV, so you got to hunch over. It's all sort of this horrible combination, this recipe for, for scoliosis. Okay. And um, so anyway, our whole generation is, is sort of plagued by this. But there's a new device. Uh, it's called the Upright, and it just made uh, double the amount they were looking for on Indiegogo for funding but it's basically a tiny little strip that attaches to your lower back right a little plastic strip you put that right on your spine um, just above your waist and then it basically trains you like a dog uh wearing a collar with these shocks these little vibrations the shocks i mean i use the word shocks loosely but they're, they're more vibrations little subtle vibrations that that let you know Whenever you're not sitting up, zap. Up yeah. <laughs> it's just like zap this kid up, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's basically it. A little vibrations to let you know when you're slouching or if you've been sitting for too long, it'll let you know to get up and take a break. And then it also works in tandem, of course, with an app to give you real time updates. See, that's bad, right? Yeah, look, look, at, look at these cavemen. These yeah. <laughs> Look at these Terrible. Neanderthals just hunched over. <laughs> they all look like Gollum too, like just like looking at their stuff, like playing with something in their hands. So, so it, this can't be real electricity, right? It's some sort of like funny vibration. Yeah. How, and it, what, you put like a 3M strip. It's a hypoallergenic <laughs> strip. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think it's supposed to regenerate the stickiness every day. Okay. Like the sticky. But, yeah, she, oh my. Yeah, she's up, right? <laughs> it certainly helps to have. Wouldn't it be cool if you could like shot like do like a Bluetooth shock remote thing? Yeah. Like put it on someone else's, I don't know, forehead. Oh, and just have it. And oh, have give it me a break. Yeah. Oh, look at give that. Give me a it goddamn works. break yeah. with that. <laughs> look at him. He looks great. Yeah, he look, look at it. Gave him muscles too. Yeah. <laughs> it's a workout. Oh, yeah, oh, that's me. Back. Yeah, see? Do you, I don't know, man. It might be. I mean, what's to say? What's the difference between this? I mean, I guess like the patch is actually delivering nicotine into your bloodstream, but the well, idea is essentially the same. I mean, I think the idea is that it's supposed to be preemptive as opposed to like a salon pause or something that's like you put on after your back is already right. hurting. This is, they should really aim this at young people. Uh, yeah, like you, Justin, who, yeah. I don't know. All I straight. see is a bunch of stiff assholes in this. <laughs> yeah. The problem is when you have a really upright hurt. posture, people tend to think you're stuck up. Yeah. They're like, Who's hey, what are you standing all straight for? Yeah. You, you think, think you're you better than us? <laughs> yeah. That's what everyone <laughs> thinks. You think you got all the answers? Yeah. Why don't you put a book on your head and walk around? <laughs> yeah. Why don't, <laughs> you're you, model? why don't you hunch over like the rest of us? You're not better than me. Yeah. It, it's really like that. That's what everyone thinks. But, you know, you don't have to have like a... A princess posture, just <laughs> what? What is? What's a princess? You know how posture? they would train princesses oh, like by royalty? putting books on their head, gotcha. yeah, like yeah. that kind of thing. You don't have to have, be that guy, yeah. but 
just yeah i don't know i don't you have awful posture oh, it's terrible yeah and you're a tall dude like i bet you're missing out on three valuable inches <laughs> you, you, you know what it is that, I think that's why it's because i am so tall but i always interact with short people like you so I'm i gotta like short. i gotta like bend down and put my hands on my <laughs> knees to talk to you stop it like i am I'm talking not, to a child i'm not <laughs> short what about yeah. your girlfriend what do you want to go to lunch <laughs> Wait, there's a difference between being short like, and being a baby. Yeah, I like put my hand. I gotta like do this when I talk to you. That's like, all you guys are so short. You're all like five foot nothing. Oh, uh, that's hilarious. Yeah. Ariel, you're gonna take us? Uh, I don't talk to everybody. Uh, it's funny. I, I'm sure I accept the fact that I'm short, man. How tall? What are you? What are, what's your height? Uh, like five seven, five eight. Oh shit, like he is short. Yeah, I'm tiny. <laughs> I mean, I'm not that much shorter than you. You know, you have maybe two inches. I gotta on like me. look down at you guys all the time, and then I feel so bad when I'm at like a um, like at a venue watching a live show, because then like people behind me, I can like hear them complaining. Oh, stop it! You're not a tree. <laughs> people are always like, "This guy." I always get stuck behind the tall guy, but then they say it just loud enough so I can hear. It makes me feel terrible. Oh man, you really have a terrible life. <laughs> yeah, and you wear a hat. Yeah, and yeah. you wear a and hat. It's like this, no reason. So people can't see. Yeah, oh, what for a, sure. It's the worst. Oh, can't wait to not sit behind you <laughs> in a movie theater. Yeah, and I'm like super upright too. <laughs> yeah, why don't you get some real problems and then let you know talk about it? I'm so tall. <laughs> <laughs> you know. The world's not built for tall people either. No, it's, it's not. It's really built for people like 5'8 to like 6'1". Yeah, one. my feet are always dangling over the edge of a bed. Yeah. I hate that. It's the worst. Does it suck when you ride roller coasters and you get knocked out? Yeah. From hitting like <laughs> yeah, beams, hitting low-hanging bar. beams Yeah, it's stuff? bad. Like that my, must suck. My head is always pressed up against the top of a car too. I got to like yeah. turn my head like How this. How do you fly in a plane? <laughs> Drive it like this all day long. <laughs> oh, you can only get cars with moon roofs. Yeah. How do you fly in a plane without disrupting the aerodynamics of the airplane. <laughs> just got to poke a hole into the, <laughs> You're such an idiot. To the overhead cabin. You're not even that tall of a dude. There's like <laughs> there's like dudes who are 6'5 in this office. What are you talking about? What who? are you, 6'1"? Who's, yeah, I'm 6'1". Six, one. We, six, one we used to have a dude. <laughs> oh, yeah, that guy. There was a dude in this office going back three years or so. Yeah, he when was tall. He, he was, was maybe seven feet tall. No. What? He you was like six something. You don't know how tall seven feet is. He was like 6'5", maybe. Oh, you mean seven inches shorter than seven feet tall? He was really tall. He he would sit in a stall. Yeah, and you could still have eye contact. Yeah, like you would open the. I mean, no, seriously, yeah, you like, would open the door and he would just be sitting there. He'd like, point at you, be like, "What's up?" Hey. You'd be like, "Hey,", hey like make hard eye contact yeah. the whole time. You're like, "Yep, yeah, what's <laughs> up, dude?" <laughs> just bend over a little bit. We're being silly. Let's move along. That's funny. I'm gonna get one of these though. What the back thing? Yeah, I'm gonna wind up being taller than you when it's all said and done. <laughs> you trust me, it's not that great, man. Yeah, I know. You live a cursed life. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah. Long sleeves are always up to your elbows and stuff. Feet dangling off the bed. You, yeah, you can't even look in a mirror. It's it. It's Everyone's only your chin. Like, you yeah, your exactly. Chin. It's from like here yeah. down. Yeah, tough life. It's, it's worth it, stuff. man. Chicks love tall guys. They do. do. They? Yeah. So do business. Like, I think I think taller people are more successful. Yeah, I agree. You know. You're the anomaly, but I mean, <laughs> I feel like maybe because I'm not standing up yeah. straight. Maybe it's because you're super I'm sitting over. down for like yeah. ten hours a day. I guarantee you, you start walking around here, you're gonna get like you're gonna get picked on first for like ordering food. Oh, sir, yeah. did you did you know what you want? You yeah. tall, fine man. You know? You need oh, to what's raise that? Camera it's like who am I gonna give a promotion in this office? Oh, you, sir. You clearly He's the have one because I could see lofty you the best. aspirations. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone gather around. Whoever I can see most clearly yeah. gets the raise. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's me. That's, I'm telling you, I man. See your whole. You neck. look at you look at all the executives in our in our company. Yeah. Six feet plus. Yeah, because we're all looking down on you guys. That's it. That's it. Yeah. There you have it. Well, we figured this out. Everything's mm -hmm. dusty up here. I'm sure. It sucks being tall. Okay, yeah, sure. all right. Anyway, um, <laughs> let's talk about this new weird material that's, yes. that's so black. Finally. The, the most metal material ever. Yeah. And it's not made of metal. It's just pretty metal. Uh, it's called Vanta Black. It is a synthetic coating made using carbon nanotubes. Okay, this is here, seen here. Hold on. <laughs> seen here. <laughs> oh, looks great. <laughs> seen here. Right, easy to see. It's pitch black. No, here it, here's an actual photo of the Vanta Black, and it, it absorbs all but 0.035 percent of light. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is it's basically like a black hole. Yeah, and it's made with carbon nanotubes, which 
I don't know what that means. And uh, it absorbs, like I said, it absorbs all but 0.03% of visible light. It's grown on a sheet of aluminum foil. The coating grabs a hold of the light and refuses to let go. So I I don't get it. I think it has something to do with like, it just refuses to reflect light. I just don't understand how they make a new material. Carbon nanotubes. Yeah, what does that even mean? Carbon nanotubes. Okay. I, yeah, I thought everything in the world already existed. But. So here's here's what happens. Light apparently enters this material, then bounces back and forth within it without ever being allowed to bounce out of mm-hmm. the material. Mm-hmm. They should make a room. Like, I need Stephen maybe a room Hawking in like a museum it. or something like that, made completely of this material. Like a hotel made yeah, of Yeah, like black. lined with the material. It would feel like you're floating in space, right? Here's where it starts getting a little creepy. It's so freaking dark, right, that it even shapes and contours uh, light to become invisible when it's coated with the stuff. So like you can make things sort of look like they're not even there mm-hmm. if you coat the right angles of something, which is crazy. Um, the guy who, behind a company who developed the material says that you expect to see the hills and then it's all black like a hole. There's nothing there. It just looks so strange. It almost it's almost like you know like when we talk about like pure white or mm-hmm. like you know they do like uh those old iphone commercials in white rooms to make it look like there's an inf- well this is the same thing but just black mm-hmm. where there's like infinite blackness so what do so you do what with they, some, yeah right, what are they going to make out of this? uses besides just freaking people out mm-hmm. um astronomical cameras telescopes infrared scanning systems Wherever you need to collaborate a device, or I'm sorry, calibrate a device, this is the blackest black thing we have. <laughs> so, like, what, you know, like, I mean, you know, Katzmeyer, the CNET TV reviewer, yeah. he writes whole freaking features on like TVs what that can black? display the blackest black. Right. Well, is it Vanta black black? Well, we could find out. <laughs> um, it's super expensive though to yeah, make because it's new because it's new uh but that's uh pretty good i think i mean there's so many jokes you could make like finally something lining up with my soul mm. or like the first commenter on this is on this gizmodo piece the blackest thing in existence ha these people have clearly never seen my ex's heart <laughs> womp, womp, womp. someone made a reference to the black hole in the roadrunner cartoons that Wile E. Coyote always puts up those like Acme black holes. Oh, like in uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Yeah, yeah, like a portal. So if you put one on the wall, you can probably just reach onto like China or something and just tap someone on the shoulder. (laughs) Like, you know what I mean? Like that kind of black hole. Right. No. But what else are we going to use that for? And like, you're still going to be able to see it, right? Unless you have an entire room full of it. Right, but like, if, think if about someone it. like gave you a piece of this black metal, it'll just look really dark. Right, but think about it. Like you, yeah. I've, when you hold it, I bet it feel it's like an optical illusion yeah. because your eyes can't discern like dimension in it. Right. Think about and at nighttime, forget it. You're never gonna see it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But like, think of no. I see. I think you would be able to see it in nighttime because it's the darker contrast, than everything. Yeah, the contrast would be sucked. Like you've never seen a black like this before. Like even these photographs of it don't do it justice. Yeah. How do you take a photograph of something the human eye can't see? Exactly. So, like, think, but you would want your camera's lens to be, like, not the glass, but you would want every other part of your camera to be made of that, I guess, right? If you're trying to get, if you're trying to focus all the light in on the sensor, Mm -hmm. right? That kind of makes sense in theory. I could be totally off base about it. (laughs) Yeah. But I feel like that makes sense. see what they're going to use this for. Vanta Black, baby. Where did that name come from? No, it's not great. Yeah, it doesn't it's exactly. Not, not. <laughs> Could this be the photo for the blog today? Just like yeah, the best are all these comments. You, yeah. you know, on Gizmodo.com, Woo! you can like, you can add comments to photos and yeah. like annotate them. Yeah. So people are just like, it's right here. <laughs> you know, they just made like a box and just like, right, right, right. hey, it's like right there. It's pretty good. It's yeah, you right can see in the it. Middle. It's right yeah. here. <laughs> not so much here or here. Zoom in. But right in the middle there. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good stuff. We'll link to that in the show notes as well. Speaking of show notes, some information has come to light over the last couple of days. Some new information has transpired, and we want to relay this information to our listening and viewing audience. If you go to the CNET webpage, that's cnet.com, and then cnet.com slash the 404, you, you hit on our homepage, which we're looking at right now. Now, a lot of people have been wondering, hey, Justin Jeff Ariel, where the F is the show notes? I can never get to it. Well, worry no more, because now, keep scrolling, keep scrolling, at the bottom, 
right hand column, you can now hit up our show note posts. Did you know about this? Yeah. You did? Just, no, I didn't know about oh, this. Oh, okay. This is cool. You're like, yeah, Jeff, 12 months. It's been, no. So here you go. So I'm clicking on one, and bam, you go right to the post that Justin does every day for us, and you have a, uh, uh, you know, a link to all the stories we talked about in that show. Cool. So I'm not 100% sure on how far back it's going to go. Right now, it looks like it's only the most recent five episodes mm -hmm. but apparently our uh web guy tells me that will soon be able to go back months and perhaps years whoa so right now it's just five shows mm -hmm. but uh yeah the future does look mildly black like vanta black and you can also go to our twitter page at the 404 and we always tweet out a link to the rundown or the we, the show blog we do day. we do i just don't know how you know, reliable mm -hmm. that is for people. But either way, you know what to do. Head, head over there. Twitter.com slash the 404. We're almost at 10,000 followers. Yeah. With the 404 Twitter. That's, that's a big deal, right? Let's do that. How many more do we have? Do we need? We need about 301 Ooh. according to this thing here. And then we get what? Uh, profit. <laughs> there should be like a star based system or something because 10,000 seems like a lot. But it doesn't really matter, right? No, do, do, they don't. They don't matter. We, you know, we'll see how that goes. I hope it happens very soon. Anyway, thanks for tuning into the show. Shoot us an email, the four hundred four at cnet.com. Thanks to everyone who wrote in about the grapefruit caper. Is what we're officially calling that mystery. Uh, we're back here tomorrow with a brand new show. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Reddit, and all that good stuff. We'll see you guys very soon. I'm Jeff Bacalar. I'm Justin Yu. I'm Ariel Nunez. This has been the 404 Show High Tech Lowbrow. We'll see you guys tomorrow.